Today's Thursday, by the way. How are you doing? Uh, probably just uh, going home and thinking, oh, I don't want to eat for supper. We have a wonderful conversation lineup for you. Thursday, throwback Thursday. So we're going to be chatting to a legend, a man that everybody envy because of how many titles he holds and everything else. He's a goalkeeper, I was sure, as uh, the late uh, CC used to call him way back in the days while playing for Medi Sundowns as well as uh, uh, that he's at the Zambia national team. So that's what we'll be doing today. You can join the conversation 086-2160. That's the number in studio. Or 060 What is the name of the show, by the way? Sports Night Amplified with Andy Lengube. My name is Brian Mufuken, standing in for him for today. Timothy uh, Amaranda is the man in charge as far as the show is concerned. You also have Malcolm Glovu and Natabonkwala. And uh, this is, you can get hold of us, uh, different platforms. Hashtag SNAWA, or you can actually go on uh, the Twitter handle is Metro FMSA. You can also get in touch in studio, as I mentioned, 60 Who are we talking about? When you think about a goalkeeper take penalties and converts them for fun, that's somebody you're talking to today. He was unbelievable in goals, not only at Sundowns, but prior to that to Newman Free State Stars, Yalla Koto, team that was owned by Ntate Mike. Mukwena may soul rest in peace as well. Brought him into the country, has ever won everything else from uh, winning the uh, Champions League to winning the AFCON tournament. Made his debut way back in the days. So we'll have a conversation and talk to him. If you have questions for Kenny Muene, that's the man we're talking to today. Do get hold of us. Let's have that conversation. But before we do that, let's do things differently and we'll come back and continue the conversations. Pat, pat, hashtag throwback Thursday on Sports Night Amplified with MD Lay on Metro FM. Powered by SABC Sport. Hi, this is the General, Diego Murise, and I'm bringing you an exhilarating display of skill. With Hollywood Bets Football X, my new game, Hear the Crowd Roar. Each time I kick up and cash out before the ball drops to claim your victory with a max payout of up to 5 million rand. Play online now. Hollywood Sportsbook is a licensed betting operator. Hollywood Bets supports responsible gambling. No persons under the age of 18 years are permitted to gamble. Winners know when to stop. South African Responsible Gambling Foundation toll-free counseling line 0800 006 008 or WhatsApp help to 076 675 0710. Join the Best Value Network with Telcom and save up to 300 Rand when you purchase any selected Telcom prepaid device at our participating retail partners. Plus, you get free 5 gigabytes anytime data, 5 gigabytes night surfer data, and a 25 minute all network voice bundle once off with every purchase. Offer available at your nearest PEP, Ackermans, TFG, Mr. Price, and other participating retail stores. Get it now. Ten of the world's greatest cricket nations are back on the pitch to argue about their next champions. Five-time global champs Australia are searching for their sixth title. But two-time winners India believe their home fans deserve the third title. While the defending champions England are more interested in back-to-back -back victories. And Frontiers are eager to reach the final. Is the time for the new champs. Witness the incredible game from 5 October to 19 November on S3 and SABC+. Subscription fees do not apply. SABC Sports is the official broadcaster of the ICC Men's ODI Cricket World Cup. India 2023. Hashtag the journey of the, the ultimate glory. For the love of the game. Blue Fontaine. Let's start it like this. They just Stand up. Metro FM Heat Wave. The Metro FM Heat Wave is back to turn up the heat in your city. Metro FM Heat Wave. Join us at the Rose Garden. Blue Fontaine on Saturday, 18th November. It's crazy. You should be here. Featuring performances by KO, Angelic, Mahu, DJ Stokey, Two Faced, Press, and Metro FM's LKG, Lulu Cafe, Matt L, Naked DJ, and many more. Baby, Your MC, Sumizi, and Pumi Malambo. Tickets available at Web Tickets. Gates open at 10 in the morning. The Metro FM Heat Wave. It's the party that never stops. It's the party that never stops. Pat, pat, hashtag throwback Thursday on Sports Night Amplified with that delay on Metro FM. Powered by SABC Sport. It is Thursday and we are throwing it all back, taking it all back uh, in the days. I tell you, the first time I saw him, in fact, when I met him now, just before he got into the studio, I was saying to him, when he was still a goalkeeper, you would never actually come next to him and say hi. <laughs> when he's holding his gloves and having his ball on the side, getting ready for the big one. And uh, yeah, he didn't really say much to you. You knew that there was war coming up when you saw this gentleman. Joining us in studio for today, we do have Kennedy Mwene. Kennedy, welcome to the show, my guy. 
Thank you so much. What an introduction. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know the late uh, Kabo Manyapi used to call you Keeper of Abu Shaw. So you're guaranteed when you're in goals, nothing will happen. I don't know what it means by keep well sure. It means uh, a showcase goalkeeper. Ah, Nothing will go wrong with ah, you in goals. Ah, okay, no, thank you so much. Yeah. Let's talk about this journey. I mean, we, we know you have done it all. You have won every trophy that's available on the African continent. And uh, you did it while you were still playing uh, for the national team of Zambia. Uh, captain, the team that eventually won it. We'll talk about the national team. Let's talk about your journey as a player. Uh, you come from Lusaka. Yep. All right. Let's talk about your journey of football. Where did it all start for you? Let me start first by saying uh, good evening to your listeners. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think um, I started playing football when I was still maybe around uh, seven, eight, somewhere there. Yeah. And um, by that time, I'd already lost my mom and dad. They they passed on in the same year, uh, in oh. two in in 90 somewhere there i was still young yeah, yeah so but uh, i was seven years old so um, i've been i was being looked after by my my aunt i grew up in a police camp in i stayed in most of the police camp in the in state lodge so i think i made it uh, when i was in uh, state lodge and then uh, i started playing when i was in grade seven i was playing for a team called state house football club yeah. Yeah. By that time, I think I was still young, and um, I just um, I was doing my grade eight by then, and uh, I was playing inside. By the way. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so they used to alternate me. Where that uh, sometimes I play inside, sometimes I I go as a goalkeeper. But uh, yeah, I wasn't sure about myself. Yeah. So that's where the journey started. And um, fast forward, I think um, there was a team called Lusaka Celtics. Yep. Mm, when i when i i wrote my grade nine exams and um i was going to a school called lusaka boys uh, it's a distance to go to where i was staying you know so they approached my club which was state house it was in amateur and then they said uh, they wanted me because they they, s they see potential in me and uh, they would pay my school fees give me transport money uh orders and the uh, first thing which came was uh first was um they mentioned about education first, which was which was very important for me. I think uh, to to pay my school fees, and uh, that's what they did. And uh, after that, I think I played uh, in Division Two with Celtics, Division One, and then we won promotion to the Premier League. Um, I never played for the <coughs> excuse me. I never played for the Saga Celtics until I left for Kito United. <laughs> they just bought me straight from yeah. after winning the league, and then. I went to Kito United. Uh, by then, uh, I think uh, it was um, Mr. Ponga. If you know Mr. Ponga, yes, yes, he's Ponga the one Lewewe, who yeah. took me to Kito United. I never spent uh, even a season at uh, Kito United. I think uh, from there, I came to South Africa in 2005, and the rest is history. You, you know, you spoke about being a goalkeeper and playing infield as well. Who converted you to be a goalkeeper eventually? I did myself because um <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, i was a striker and uh, you know sometimes when you are playing especially in lower divisions yeah they used to to kick cause by that time i was already playing for for under 17 under 20 national team yeah. so they knew that i was even at under 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 20 i just changed when we were coming to south africa to play kosafa that's when i changed to be a goalkeeper instantly but because there was uh, they were kicking me too much so i decided i know i can't i can't take it anymore let me just go where there isn't too much contact and that was goalkeeping and i found myself uh, prospering in, in goalkeeping yeah when you talk about kito i mean i spent some time in kito i think 2017 18 and 19 i was in kito covering the kosafa under 20 tournament Mm. We'll talk about that because there's a nice story there that comes from <laughs> that part uh, of uh, of the country. I know that whenever Nkana plays at a, uh, when Nkana plays in Quito, it's crazy. It gets seriously crazy. Mm. When you go to Ndola as well, there's another story when you go there as well. Yeah. Let's talk about football in Zambia. I mean, when, when you grow up as a kid playing football in, in, in Zambia, what, what, what is that what you wanted to do post that you want to come to South Africa, you want to go overseas? And how did the move happen? Who spotted you and brought you to uh, Free State Stars? Okay, so I didn't have this in mind that uh, one day I'll come to play in South Africa. Yeah, I think we were coming from a uh, World Cup qualifiers, uh, the national team, and our first choice goalkeeper was Kalili Lokakonje. He played for Golden Arrows. Yeah, and uh, the coach by then was Kalusha. 
Kalusha yeah. Bwadia. So we came back, we were playing Togo. We came back and there was that uh, that was the week for Kosafa and we are hosting it in Zambia. Yeah. So I was told that uh, you will start this game not knowing that uh, Free State Stars scouts they were there and they were looking at the goalkeeper who came from Malawi. Yeah. So after the game I think our game cha- they changed their mind after they w- after watching me and then they just decided to say no we came for this goalkeeper for from Malawi but we are going with Kennedy and then after that immediately after the tournament they went and speak to my team immediately after that I came to South Africa after that I think uh, I came to South Africa in, in June, yo, by that time, you know quite what the way it is. <laughs> it's freezing. Yeah. So, hey, I was having it difficult. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, you know, after that, yeah, I found myself in South Africa. But it wasn't in my mind that one day I would play in South Africa. But it just happened, and it happened so fast. I still remember the tournament you're talking about. I mean, he's talking about uh, the uh, when he played against South Africa, uh, played uh, in that tournament in, in Zambia. Yeah. So you get to free state now. Officially in free state, you are now a goalkeeper. How do you find a free state? How do you break through into the senior team to become the number one goalkeeper of free state stars? Because that stars galore in that team. <laughs> I was I was still young. I was just uh, the same year I was turning twenty. So yeah. I came here to nineteen, turning twenty. I was still young and short, not even bulk the way I am now. <laughs> you know, I was still a slender. Yeah. So for me, I think it was challenging because there was no one I, I knew. But um, being um, a boy where I know where I'm coming from and how difficult it is, I think that was the chance which I took with both hands. And um, I didn't play most of the games. I play fewer. But, uh, you know, that's the same season Free Sisters uh, was relegated. And most of the people who came with me, like Joseph Msonda, Clive Hachlenser, yeah. they returned back to Zambia. But um, uh, the, the, the chairman, Mr. Mike Mkwena, may he so rest in peace, um, he just told me, say, you, you are still young. I am not even going to give you your clearance. You are staying here until this team comes back, until you make it. So he treated me like his own son. And I listened to him. I stayed, uh, stayed at Free Sisters until the following season we played in the national face division yeah we won the league we went back to psl after that it was just normal for me because i got used to everything now in south africa until uh i even knew how to speak so too <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's hear it i mean you speak so too. let's hear it now no kabu wanya ni mara mara hey you know, it has it has it has gone because <laughs> I'm in Jersey now. Yeah, it's taking Jersey now. <laughs> I'm in the Jersey city now. lights are getting yeah, the no, to you now. That side, most of them, even my friends, they were talking to me in Sutu. That's why I could I could speak um, deep Sutu. Yeah. Like, yeah. But uh, nowadays, kati wabuwa fela uli. We'll talk some more about your days at Free State Stars because that for me, you had one unbelievable team at Free State Stars. More of the journey of Kenny Mwena. It is Throwback Thursday. Do get involved. Get in touch. 60 We're taking to uh, keep by Abu Shoy, I call him. Man, that's really stayed there. Omzanti's and Africa's number one goalkeeper. Start your engines and crank down the window, South Africa. It's time to pump it up and win your share of 2 million rand in pick and pay grocery vouchers with BP. This festive, swipe your smart shopper every time you pump it up with 600 rand or more. That's 200 winners, 10,000 rand each in eight weeks. So pump it up at BP all festive for more chances to win. T's and C's apply. BP, every day brighter. Prur, where can I go to get a bucky to move small things? Ah, just go to my guys. And to move my employees? Go to my guys. What about a small truck? Bro, just go to my guys, Avis Van Rental. Yes, if you need to move anything small or big, Avis Van Rental has the widest range of commercial and utility vehicles at the most competitive local rates for you. Simply call 0861-424-424 or visit a branch near you. Uh, what's that number again? 0861-424-424. Avis Van Rental, a subdivision of Avis. The Cosi Nation says... It-
Kosi Alpelu Moya. But the Bucks are confident that Young Kindao, Iparapara, Yapumelena, who are the real kings of Soweto, golden, black, or black and white. Uhamba Novani, Amakosi, or Amaparania. This is the DSTV Premiership, the Soweto Derby. Kaiser Chiefs versus Orlando Pirates on Saturday, 11 November at 2.30 p.m. Live on SABC One and SABC Radio Stations. Also available on SABC Plus and SABCSport.com. Hashtag, we love it here. Brought to you by SABC Sport. For the love of the game. Sports Night Amplified with Andile on Metro FM. John Committee is uh, chairman of Cape Town City. There was a lot of uh, transfer rumors and mm. to stabilize the club to an extent. Is this uh, in one with one of the most wanted players, Kanye Samaya perhaps? Okay, if Maya scores 15 goals this season, this is his price tag and uh, I don't think I'm wrong. 37 million uh, in, in, in current currency? Even that number now with what's happening with the African Football League, they're throwing money around like it's nothing. It's going to let it come our way because <laughs> if they want valuable <laughs> players, it's... <laughs> I'm sitting here and I'm putting the dots together. I had Rulani sit here a week ago and he said he's looking for a striker and I asked him where. He said, no, there's one that he's looking at locally. Is that the only team that can afford a mile? Realistically, probably. I know that Stellenbosch could afford it if uh, <laughs> was willing to do money. Monday through Friday, 6 to 7 p.m. Time has gone now 24 minutes after the 6 o'clock. This is Sports Night Amplified with Andy Le. My name is Brian Mufi. I'm standing in for him. This is Metro FM. You can get in charge, uh, in touch with us. He's 60 7303 That is the number that is so we can send us your WhatsApp voice notes. You can also send us a... Uh, you can actually call us in studio if you want to chat with uh, uh, Kenny Muene. The number is 86 so, Kenny, let's talk about your days at Free State Stars. Who are your teammates when you go to Free State Stars at that <coughs> stage uh, that you found you know, from South Africa? I found it was Pio Shabalala. Yeah. Uh, um, Mashinini, he was a goalkeeper. Yeah. Uh, I found you. Mm. <laughs> I'm taking you back, eh? Way back. <laughs> I think Jimmy Kauleza was there. Yeah. Klezam Fedi was there. That was a squat and a half. Yeah, it was. But by then, I didn't know them myself. So, yeah, yeah there were a lot of them. I think, uh, yeah, those are the people who I found at Free State Stars. And, uh, yeah, they welcomed me. And, uh, yeah, like I said, we have gone and separate ways, all of us, yeah. Some of them, they are coaches. Some of them, uh, they are into business, yeah. You spoke, I mean, you, you spoke about the fact that you used to be an infield player where you played as a striker before. Is that where the confidence of taking penalties come from? I guess so. I guess so. I think uh, the confidence, yes, I would say it com it's coming from there because uh, I, again, I know the weakness of the goalkeeper because I'm a goalkeeper. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, it looks simple, but it's difficult because you have to keep uh, the eye contact between you and the goalkeeper. Because once you make a small move, that's where you leave the ball and you cannot come back as a goalkeeper. So I know I know the techniques of uh, goalkeepers and uh, I know um, where to put it um, when uh, when you see that the goalkeeper is not moving. Yeah. You have scored plenty of goals. Mm. You've also been able to save plenty of goals. Mm. You know, we'll, we'll talk about who was, let's talk about the players that you played against. Mm. Who was the most difficult player to play against in the PSL? Let's start from the Free State Stars days. It has been always Mabuti Kanyeza. <laughs> Mabuti Kanyeza. And then there's Mabuti. Yeah. There was... Um, why, why Mabuti? What, what is that? He what is different about it? He, he gives trouble to defenders. He was, he was all over. I mean, he could pressure four, five with the goalkeeper alone. And he's just, he's just, he was just difficult, Mabuti. Also, yeah. same as Gabuza. Yeah. Gabuza also, I had a difficult, uh, I had difficulties playing with Gabuza because they, he's, he's aggressive. Same as Mabuti. They, they just aggressive, and all of them, they are coming from where? <laughs> Golden Arrows. <laughs> <laughs> so it tells you. So Golden Arrows was, was a trouble team for you. It was a trouble team for, for me, yeah. And uh, again, playing with them, I also, they were, they were difficult, Golden Arrows. They were very difficult. Do you still remember the first penalty you scored in the Premier Division? Or you don't remember that? 
I don't Straight remember. Straight back, eh? I, I don't remember. I, I, I can see that you and I, we've been around, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, memory is no longer, is no longer as sharp as it used to no, be no, back no, in the no, days. No, 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 I've forgotten, I've forgotten. The You've forgotten one, about I that? I have forgotten. Yeah. I, I'll tell you which one it was. Mm. You know, I remember I did a game, it was way back in 2000 and, um, I'm just trying to think about the years here. Uh, 2007, 8? Played against the uh, Kaiser Chiefs. It Kune was in goals. The one all draw against Kaiser Chiefs. At the Chosen Paid. Yeah, way back in the days. Eh? Yo, 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 it has been a while. Yo. Yeah. I Plenty of goals remember. you have scored as a goalkeeper. I mean, you, you were an unbelievable taker. I, mm. I still remember one of the matches that you played in and uh, you scored a penalty. I was still playing for Free State Stars. Uh, it was a game you played against uh, Black Leopards also. Um, and there was one you scored. That for me will always be a memorable one. Where you left Itumelon Kuna rooted. It was in a in a cup tie. The MTN8? Yeah. When you say four penalties on a day. <laughs> that was the way of saying bye bye to PSL play. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I can only say. That was me saying thank you so much. Bye bye. Let's talk about culture of football at Free State Stars and mm. a culture of football at Mamridi Sundowns. Mm. When you had to compare the two, how are the different cultures there? Look, I think, firstly, I think Free State Stars, in a, it's in a small town, yeah. you know, and um, there, I think, there isn't too many things to do. It's only football, home, football, home. So I think it even helped me a lot also, being in such an environment, very small town, and all you think of is football, football, football. Yeah. And uh, whoever you want to go out with, ah, it's Mar one of Mar your Mar colleagues. No, 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 no. Let's go back to Free State. Free State, when you go to Bushukung, ne? When no, you go not, to, not, not no, in Bethlehem. No, I'm saying, Bethlehem. No, I'm saying when we're in Putari Chava. Yeah. You know, you're looking around there, uh, you have, uh, the, you know, there's Namahadi there, mm -hmm. you know, and then you go up, uh, there's uh, uh, take up up the road around that side. Yeah. Uh, so, and then, and, and, and uh, you try to tell me that you went to the gym and played football, went home, and with all that vibe that's happening there. Yeah, but at the end of the day, if you want to go and have a nice time, it's either with your family or with the colleagues you play football with. Yeah. So most of the time, I think we were always having fun together as a team. You find that maybe four, five, six of us yeah. we are in the same place. And we are like brothers that side. So if I, if, 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 if I can call Ranti now, he'll actually confirm that. He will tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so coming to yeah, to Sundowns, it's a, it's a step. So you must understand you're coming to Johannesburg. You yeah. must know why you're in Johannesburg. You're here to play football. But there's other things which comes. So you have to be disciplined. You know, there's a lot of things I learned. I think it was uh, it was it, it was a blessing that I started by by playing my professional football at Free Sisters, so that I can know the culture and the way things are done in South Africa. So I think coming to Johannesburg for me, I didn't have any any hassles because already I'd known how the people of South Africa behave and how nice it is in South Africa. <laughs> first, so you you need to control yourself when it comes to that. So you need discipline as a player when you come to Johannesburg and you're from a town like uh, Bethlehem or Kwakwa. So for me, that was the first thing, Yeah, the first thing in my mind. I'm here to play football first. Let me give you some numbers. This is coming from Abdul Jab. You know, he, he loves numbers. He just <laughs> throws his number. These are some of the top five numbers mm -hmm. in your career, all right? Uh, you are the only goalkeeper in the history of the PSL to have won the MTN8, Medbank Cup, League Cup, CAF Champions League, and the Afcon trophies. Wow. You know, you scored 11 goals as a goalkeeper, as I was telling you about you, your penalties, unbelievable penalties. Mm. Now, 50 plus clean sheets, that's crazy. Across Free State Stars and Sundowns. That, those are some crazy numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I think at the end of the day, I think we must give credit also to the, 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 the kind of players I was I, I was playing with. Yeah. The defenders I was having. You, at Free State I, I had James Matola, Chintu Kampamba, Jonathan Mensa. Yeah. You name them. At Sundowns, I had Ali Shoot, I had Tawonte, Wayne Arense. You know, you name them. They were solid defenders. So it's not just about me. I think they helped me to, to reach those numbers as well. So, yeah. 
we all talk about the good stuff that you have done. We'll talk some more about your stats because mm. those numbers are crazy. I mean, these are NASCAR. I mean, I've just been sitting going through the numbers. Mm. Crazy numbers. You spoke about a difficult player to play against. Mm. Surely there were some down moments. How did you come up from that? Which ones were those? The games you think back to say, sure, ah, that was a howl of a game. And how did you come out out of that to recover and really get back and give your best afterwards? At Sundowns or at Free State Stars? Let's start with Free State Stars because that's where it all started. I think I've told myself to, as a goalkeeper, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, the ball ends up to, with you. Yeah. And not everyone sees where, they, where it starts. Yeah. But it ends up in the net. In the and, the on, net. and the p only person who is there to blame is who? The goalkeeper. So mentally, first thing as a goalkeeper, you have to be very strong mentally. Yeah. So for me, I think that's what I've, which has worked for me. And um, you must understand that uh, you're not going to have all the games the same. Yeah. You know, I've made a lot of mistakes in my goalkeeping uh, when I was still a goalkeeper. Yeah. And uh, what helped me come out of that, it was, uh, okay, I've made this mistake. I've costed the team, but I look forward for another game. It will pain me for 24 hours after that. I put it aside because I know that there's another game coming. I need to perform because when I sit on that, it will even br it, uh, bring me even w more down. So for me to to perform even better, it's to make the mistakes I m the mistake I made to make it work for me because I look at something which I don't want to do again. So for me, is as quickly as possible, I had to forget about that and then look for a, a, a next game. At Sundowns, in comes Denis Onyango. Mm. You're sitting at your highest now. You are the main goalkeeper. Denis Onyango arrives. You're now battling for that, for mm. that position. Talk about the relationship in goalkeeping department when you find that because we have Ronan Williams eventually come later on into the team. Yep. How that competition went about and how you're able to still keep each other going when in, when you probably were not playing this number of matches mm. that you used to play previously? For me, I think first thing first as a goalkeeper, you need to know that there's only one goalkeeper who can play at uh, any given time yeah. in a match. Yeah. And for me, what came first was to accept that there's someone who needs my support and is doing well for the club yeah and um the relationship was healthy we used to train and push each other yeah and um whoever was playing we i was be uh, backing whoever was playing because at the end of the day it's not about kennedy when yes i was seeing limited game time but what is important is that uh, the team comes first if the team does well or if Dennis does well, it reflects on what kind of goalkeepers Sundowns have. So for me, it was a win-win situation. I had my part. I have contributed to the club. Here is another person coming who wants to contribute to the club and is doing well. Why not support him? Why not support him? That's how we developed this kind of relationship with Dennis. Even up to now, even before <laughs> I retired, yeah. you know, I, too, I even told him, there is a young man coming, my friend. We have to look after him. And that's why Ronwen never even found it difficult to 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 kickstart like the way he, he did and uh, look at where he is now. Only six goalkeepers in a Premier C in a Premier Soccer League have kept more clean sheets, in fact, than you. And Ronwen is there. Ronwen is there? Yeah. Itumen Kuna is there? Monib. Dennis Onyango is there? Monib Josephs? Wayne Sanderland? As well as Patrick Tinyak. So you are in that group of seven top goalkeepers in a PSL. Let's talk about national team now. <laughs> um, you eventually make a break after you <coughs> played at the Kosafa tournament. You made your break into the senior team of, of Zambia. Mm. And uh, let's talk about your first game in Zambian colors. You already yeah. mentioned that you were playing in Zambia. You eventually find yourself at the Afcon tournament. Yeah. When I was at Free Sisters, yes. and Free Sisters was in the national first mm -hmm. division. Yes. Yeah. You find yourself playing an AFCON tournament, and that was in uh, the 2006 edition in Egypt? Was it in Egypt? 2006. Because yeah. Because uh, 2006, I yeah. still remember. In fact, I have the starting 11 for that team that uh, year that played was, against South Africa. I was, I was the fourth choice. Yes. Yeah. But you eventually had to play a game in the tournament that year in Egypt. Against and. South Africa. <laughs> Against South Africa. 
It was oh. on the 30th of January 2006 is, against South Africa. Is that the tournament where South Africa went? They played three games, no goal scored, no points, no, no points, no, no goal scored. Yes, no goal scored in a tournament. Yes, and. Uh, no points. No, uh, Kennedy, come on. We're talking about a different story here. Please, man. Ow. No, 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 I'm just trying to remember. What's wrong with you now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. I get it now. That, that, that game that, you, that was played, it yeah. was uh, at uh, the um, uh, al Etihad Stadium in Alexandria. In Alexandria. Yeah. And uh, you were in goals. Mm. You had Anketani there. Mm -hmm. You have uh, Chilensa. Mm. You have Musonda. Mm -hmm. You have Tana. You have Sinkala. You had Njovu. Uh, you have Katongo, and you had Christopher Katongo, who scored a goal on the day as well. Mm. You had uh, Colin Simbesuma, mm. and you had James Chamanga, mm. uh, Chamanga, and uh, Kalisha Biala was the coach of that particular team. Let's talk about that moment. You, you, you are coming from mm. South Africa. You are playing in the lower league in South Africa, in the second mm. tier in South Africa. Mm. You find yourself in an Afcon tournament. You play against South Africa, right? Because I, 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 like in that group. Yeah. We always wanted to play against Bafana. <laughs> no matter what. <laughs> Any group where there is South Africa, we we yeah. were trying to make it difficult. Yeah. Anyway, so I was still playing at Free Sisters and I was given a chance to play in that game. Yeah. Because it was the last game. Yeah. And we were out, South Africa we were out. Yeah. So he was trying to see which players he's gonna remain with. Yeah. Unfortunate enough we won one zero and I played well in that game. So since then I've been going I don't even know how many Afghan I've been. It seems like you love playing against South Africa because in 2005 at the Kosafa tournament, 2005, then South Africa played against you. It was a two-all draw, mm. and you went on to win that game on penalties. Yeah. In the semifinals of the Kosafa tournament. Do you now, remember that? I was still in first national division. Fast forward. Now you find yourself now with the big boys. <clears throat> You're playing at the AFCON tournament. Yeah. Uh, Zambia goes back to play in, in, in Gabon, Equatorial Guinea yep. in 2012. Mm. Uh, you've now you are now part of a senior team of, of, of the Zambian national team. Yeah. Before you guys were to play those matches, it was an emotional time because we were all sitting watching the whole scenes as you revisited what happened in Zambia mm -hmm. uh, to Zambian players way back in Gabon. in Gabon. Tell us about that moment and tell us about that particular tournament that you eventually went on to win. I think, to be honest with you, I think it was written somewhere. Yeah. And um, even when we went to the tournament, we have been, we've been, we were the same group of players for the last, because we went to Angola, we went out in the quarterfinals, and yeah. we were, a majority of those players, we've been together from under 23 for almost three to four years. Yeah. So we knew each other. Yeah. So we were camping here in South Africa, and we said, guys, we are tired of going to participate. We have to go and what? to do to go and challenge for this because we cannot go out in first round quarterfinals the least we can do this year is just to uh, next year is to go to the final and see what happens and obvious the universe the universe being what it is it hit us and we went all the way to the uh, to the to the final look i think um, we were based in equatorial guinea and yeah. when we played all our games and we were told that the final will be hosted in um in the uh, ribraville yeah and I think that's when now it hits all of us that now, I think it was written somewhere that uh, one day a team, a national team um, will play their finals in where the the, the heroes uh, perished. And uh, when we went there, you know, it was just, it was like they have, they have, they have done something to you. You know, you could, you were not the same person. And when we, we went to the, to the site where they, they crashed. Uh, we went to put some flowers there and yeah. uh, we, you know, Hold you could thought. feel. Hold a thought, because that is something very important. We'll come back and talk about that in a bit. We're still in conversation with uh, Kenny Mwen on Metro FM. My name is Brian Mufuki and this is Sports Night Amplified with Andila. I mean, Kennedy, you were just talking about a very important moment. You go and, I mean, Kalisha Bala was supposed to be part of the team. Mm. He missed the flight, was unable to be part of that. That's when the, 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 the players perished. Mm. Um, then you find yourself playing in a final. Yeah. You know how important that is for the Zambians. I mean, your stats in the tournament that was played in 2012, you considered a goal in a game against Senegal. Yeah. Uh, two in a game. That the Libya game was something else. It was yeah. mad all over the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How you guys went out. I mean, I remember Katongo literally tapping the ball into the back of the net mm. in an encounter as well. Mm. Kept a clean sheet against Equatorial Guinea. Clean sheet against Sudan. Clean sheet against Ghana. 
And then in the final as well. Clean sheet. In the final, when you went on to win 8-7 on penalties, you took one as well, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look, I think after, um, you know, it started with the quarterfinals against uh, Ghana. I think the most, the toughest ga- game we had, it was against Ghana. Yeah. That was the final before the final. And yeah. I think uh, when we beat them one day, we knew that uh, going to play against the Ivory Coast, you know, the coach just said, if you lose to Ivory Coast, there is no news. It's expected. You beat Ivory Coast, there will be news everywhere in the world. So go and enjoy yourselves. And we went to enjoy ourselves. Before we know it, it was a penalty. Immediately when they missed the penalty, Ivory Coast, we knew that this was going home. So indeed going home. I mean, uh, uh, Cole Torre was one of those as well mm. as uh, uh, Jevino say uh, missed his penalty. Mm. Among some of the penalties you say, by the way, in your, in your, in your, in your save one against Dogbra at some stage. There was also one it. against uh, Gian. Gian, yeah. There was also Mares. Yeah. The late John Shoes Mushueu. Yeah. <laughs> John Obi Mikel. Yo. <laughs> there are many. Eh? <laughs> yeah, I don't even remember some of them. Yeah, I tell you, I mean, th- there's some numbers, you know. I probably have to send that to team so you can get those numbers. Please. So you can be able to see some of the players you played against Please. and save penalties from. Please. Because those are crazy numbers. Yeah. Like I was telling you, I was in Zambia yeah. in uh, 2018 and 17, and 17 and 18. Mm. And I met a young man mm. called Bradley, Bradley Mwene. Bradley Mwene, my nephew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's a goalkeeper as well, by yeah. the way. Yeah. He was playing in Lusaka. Then when I met you, he was still playing at Lusaka. He just moved to, to University of Pretoria yeah. at the stage. And he found himself going back to Lusaka, and then he came back to play for Real Kings. Real Kings. And uh, he ended up now... Tell him, tell me about him. He is a goalkeeper. Did you get him into football or what happened? No, I think he. <laughs> um, how, how is your nephew, by the way? How is your nephew? Is you... Our firstborn. Yeah. Uh, his name is Bradley Mwen. He's, uh, he's in police. Okay. In Zambia. He's, that's his, uh, his son, Bradley. So he's my nephew because our firstborn in, in, our fa- in, my in family. your family. Yeah. yeah that's, the, that's the son. Okay. So he's even taller than me. I know that. Yeah. I saw him. He's way taller than you. Yeah. I mean, he was unbelieving goals. That, uh, but that now he's playing, he's playing for a team called Nkwazi. It's a police uh, team. I know Nkwazi very well. It's yeah. in the Premier League. Yeah. And uh, he's doing well at the moment. But uh, yeah, he told me he wants to be even better than me. I said, not a problem, <laughs> but don't put yourself under pressure. <laughs> because if you put yourself under pressure, you won't. But just be yourself. Yeah. There's, there's a big tournament that is happening at the moment around the African continent, mm. and everybody's talking about that. Mamadi yeah. Sundowns, uh, one of those teams that have been selected to be part of uh, this elite mm. uh, tournament. You won the CAF Champions League with Sundowns in yeah. 2016, um, and under Peter Musimani, mm. then you had to work with uh, Mangoba Mniti alongside Coach Luane Mokwena. Mm. You're now Coach Luane Mokwena, you have now retired. Yeah. When, when, when does a player feel this is time to retire? Was there something that happened? You just woke up and said, you know what, I'm done. I could feel in my body. Yeah. My body couldn't allow me to move. Some Because you, as a goalkeeper, you feel when yeah. the movement is slow now, you must know that it's high. It's high. And, yeah, and you have to accept. Yeah. Yeah. When you, you have played on a continent with Mamedi Sundowns Football mm. Club, you have played with the Zambian national team on a continent. Mm. When you think about some of the toughest opponents you played on the continent, let's start about club level first mm. when you're at Sundowns. Which one are those? North African teams. countries. Yeah. Widat. A match that you featured where Widat played. What sort of atmosphere? I mean, I saw the atmosphere on, su- on Sunday last week yeah, yeah. when they played against Sundowns in the first leg of uh, the final. Yeah, first, let me just say. You know, kudos to the CAF executive uh, led by the Dr. Patrice Mutsepe. You know, it was, you know, uh, we always uh, we always say that uh, change is painful. Yeah. But a man has got a vision and uh, it's going somewhere. And uh, you can see we are where we are at the moment because of his vision. And um, look, I think it's something which we, have, we want to create even here at home. You yeah. know, it's full, it's packed. And everyone, you know, and uh, every player wants to, to 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 play in a in a final which is packed like that. And uh, we just wanna we just wanna plead with our supporters, Yellow Nation, please come in numbers and let's create the atmosphere at the stadium whereby it will be something we'll talk about for the next few years. I think we know that they always come to the game, but we need this one has to be special. We need to fill this um, loft as uh, first field. 
when, when, when you look at, I mean, talking about the na Yellow Nation having to come to the stadium. For me, I mean, the biggest thing is that Sundowns are offering tickets for free mm. for them to come to the stadium. But yep. you go to these North African countries, they are, they are play, fans are paying to be at the stadium, yeah. but they pack the stadium to, to, to the rafters. Yeah. What do we need to, in your opinion, what do you think we need to do as South Africans to be able to get to that level at the same time? I think it's the passion. Yeah. Those people, they beat us with the passion. The kind of passion they have for their team, mm -hmm. I think it's it's on another level. Yeah. I think for us, we need to teach our supporters also to have that in mind. Yeah. Because you can go to Egypt, go to Morocco. Yeah. They, f they just they are just told to say no. This game will it will be only fifty thousand. If they if the the capacity of the stadium is eighty thousand, they say no. We will only allow fifty thousand. They are just being stopped. So it's something which we need to learn from them as well. Because yeah. from the start, before the game, till the end of the game, you won't hear them quiet. Whether their team is down or they are leading, yeah. they continue pushing their, their team. And which is something which we have to pick up. We have to, to learn from them. Yeah. Yeah. Tough stuff indeed here. So good luck for Sundowns this coming weekend. Also, let's say congratulations to the Mobility Sundowns ladies team because they qualified for the semifinals of uh, the uh, Care Women's Champions League. Won their two opening matches. Mm. Uh, there's been something different. You know, Goye injured and Sundowns still managed to move on. Uh, some new players coming in with coach Jerry Shabalal alongside Agnes Nkosi. Well done to them. They are uh, playing their last game in the group stages of uh, the tournament taking place at the moment in Cote d'Ivoire. That is where the national team is going to happen. Let's now go to uh, the voice notes. Uh, before I do that, let's pay some bills and then we'll come back and go to the voice note because, hey, Masanda one and everyone else who's to, to, to the man. Drop us a voice note on 060 552 7303. Waking up, down to the turn. As I said, Metro Evan, uh, here, Jericho. I still remember the, the penalty the guy scored against Itu Melem Kune. Wow, that was a nice, nice take, my guy. Uh, keep it up uh, sharp. Good evening, Sports Amplified listeners and presenters. I am Love Mo from Whitbank in Mupumalanga. Kenneth Mwene, you are an inspiration to the youth. Uh, I just like the way you take the penalties. Keep up the good work. Good evening. Hi, Brian. Uh, it's Mazola Mulefe, SABC sport journalist. Uh, I hardly do this, but You've got a legend, uh, icon, uh, someone I consider uh, a brother, a family member. You know, we are from, well, I'm from Bethlehem. Um, you know, I, I, I've watched a lot of Kennedy's games, um, you know, playing for a club that's close to my heart. Lennon Tate Mike Mukwena was like a father to me. Uh, I know the family uh, very well. I still said that they've, you know, no longer involved in football at, at that level but yeah I just want to you know give Kennedy his flowers for an amazing career that he's had uh, over the years and um, yeah I mean I'm looking forward to seeing him as a coach I know he's serious about his coaching badges and let's see how how that goes in his career thank you love you Kennedy yeah, I know it's a rare thing when you actually find a, uh, a one of the colleagues calling in. So that just shows how much you've touched him. I mean, he's from. Yeah, I want to. In fact, Mazol, actually, next time we want to talk to him about it, mm -hmm. to ask him. Unai and Kennedy that go free state when he was. That's a different story for another day. Kennedy, you, you are now. You have now retired. Yep. So what are you doing now? You are I'm now assistant goalkeeper coach. Assistant goalkeeper coach. Yes. How has it been? So far, so good. I I haven't uh, encountered in. Uh, any challenges because um, it's the same people who were coaching me who are still there. So it's easy for me to to do things the way they, they want them to do. So Coach Wendell is still there. I'm, um, he was my coach and um, I'm, I'm working under him here. Kenny, thank you very much for making time to be with us in studio for today. Um, it was a wonderful day to spend with you. I mean, I watched you throughout the years, commentators on games where you actually covered. And uh, to have you now being in studio, having a chat with us, was unbelievable. Thank you very much. And all of the best to Masanda one that is coming weekend uh, when they take on with it. Please, 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 we beg you. They must come in numbers and make noise as much as possible because it, it touches most of uh, our players and it, which makes them to even perform even better. Please come in numbers and support us. Please, 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 Masanda one. Yellow Nation, please.
You're five minutes away from the end of this. Thank you very much to our guests for today on Throwback Thursday. There's Kenny Mwene, the former Zambian and Mamuri Sundowns goalkeeper. Up next at uh, 7 o'clock, it will be uh, Faith Mangope between uh, 7 and 9 with a Metro Talk. And after that, it will be um, Life in Music with Apollo Mtichaka. Let's now go on the line. I'm joined by my former boss, by the way, uh, Gary Redbone. Gary, good evening. Welcome to the show. <laughs> hey, good evening. Uh, and always good to be back and talk to you guys. <laughs> Let's talk about this new wave in African football. You know, um, the African Football League, it started eight teams being selected and put together. We are now come to the right at the end of it, the finale of uh, this, this tournament that is coming up. Let's talk about what did you make of the overall competition from the beginning to now? Well, I, I think it's been fantastic, and I think there were a lot of doubters about people, from people saying that, you know, why should a tournament like this, what's the need for a tournament like this? But I think the, the level of football, the, the level of organization, the prize money involved, the way it's just brought together the best that African football has to offer onto one platform, one tournament, has been astounding. You know, it's still short of astounding. And I think that it, it, it's been fantastic for African football. I mean, it's been, uh, you know, I mean, the audience, the global audience yeah. for this. Uh, for this has been phenomenal. There's never been no one, no many broadcasters around the world have taken an African uh, football final of any sort um, uh, until uh, the final, uh, the first leg of the final between uh, Wide Ed and, and, and Sundowns. I imagine it's going to be the same on Sunday. The whole world is going to watch this. Let's talk about, I mean, you talk about the crowds that you've actually been able to see and the number of takers around the world as well. What made this particular tournament to be? the key one that everybody wanted to be part of overall when you talk about audience? Well, well, well I think the first thing is, 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 is that we've been able to kind of build something that, that really reflects excellence so that what you see on the TV and, and the product that's offered for both the teams that are taking part in it and, and in terms of the way that, that it's all put together, you know, is, is a cut above the kind of tournament level that we're kind of used to in, in, on, on the continent. And it's much more in line if you look at things like, you know, the UEFA Champions League or, or the Euros and FIFA tournaments and things like that. And so that's the kind of standard the world wants to see. Yeah. So about producing a tournament and together the best football, the best players, the best fans, the best, um, the best well-organized clubs and the best stadiums, that are all wrapped together in, in a very, very, you know, in a proper branding and, 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 and a well-organized broadcast experience. That's what makes what makes sports interesting for for viewers around the world, and this is why the African Football League needed to be done so that um, African football can have finally have a, a showcase that really um, shows the world exactly just how good it can be. In terms of broadcasting rights, I know that SABC will be showing uh, the matches. How did it come about? Well, well, I mean, the thing is, is that, is that the, the the agreement was actually, and there was a, was an agreement put in place uh, for the SABC to get that, and the organised, you know, what I mean, for, for for this tournament to be seen mainly in the free to air space and not be stuck behind the paywall um, where people had to only people who are subscribing to uh, to to a broadcast platform could watch it. So the the the, the, the general rule across the board, in fact. In Africa, in particular, was that this was only available on free to air broadcasts, yeah. not on pay TV broadcasts at all, because that went against the spirit of what the, what the AFL was supposed to be about. And, and so the SABC were one of the key um, broadcasters that the organisers wanted to have this uh, game, want, wanted, wanted the, the, these games to be carried on. Yeah. I mean, uh, we are now coming to the end, we're wrapping it all up uh, this, uh, this coming weekend. What would you like to see next when you talk about the next one in AFL? Well, I think that the main thing was that this is why it was a kind of smaller, focused version of this tournament to try and get it started in a very short space of time that was needed to put everything together, in fact. But yeah. that uh, just, to, to just kind of prove the, the case and see what could be done. And I think that it's been a phenomenal success by all measures. Now the, the thing is to now take the next stage is to build it, bring in more teams, uh, you know, expand it. But again, to keep so, you know what I mean? I'm, what I'm hoping to do is just keep that measure of excellence and make sure that we're still just bringing in the best of the best and expand it in that way. And the money that comes in, because it's going to bring in a lot more money, yeah. can be used to start bringing the clubs below that, the second-tier clubs, and then helping them invest in bringing their facilities and resources up to standard so that this tournament can grow and grow and become you know, a, a properly... Um, platform for excellence, a proper platform for excellence for, 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 for African football. 
Kerry Redbone, thank you very much for having a conversation with us. Uh, that was uh, the, uh, the director at uh, Sportscape Media for my SABC uh, GM for Sport, Gary Redbone. Breaking it all down as far as the AFL is concerned. I'm done, and I'm back again tomorrow with more of uh, the same year on uh, Metro FM. Hell still holding it down for Andy there. Thank you very much uh, to the guys and make sure everything went very well on the show today. Timmy and Cole, until you meet again next time, have yourself a splendid evening.